Well, hello there, beautiful shrimp people. In today's video, we're going to go over what I've been doing over the last couple of days because, as some of you will know, I was getting work done on my house and specifically the electronics, and I had other guys in doing flooring and whatever else. And yeah, it was just really not possible to do any kind of video because, yeah, there was just so much noise, and yeah, the power was basically going off all the time, right? If you don't know, even one of my very, very basic videos, like this one, for example, when it, once it's done right today, it will probably be, probably be about 20 minutes and I'll have to try and edit it and then I'll have to upload it and whatever else. And guys, this stuff takes hours. Let me have a little sip of this coffee. Mm. This stuff can take hours to do, right? And when you finally have your video ready, you've still to upload it to YouTube, so there's even more hours so for me, a 20 minute video now takes probably about an hour to upload, right? So yeah, you can see the gist I'm coming from here with, with when you have people working in your house, it's almost impossible to get a YouTube video done, especially when your room here next door there is where my main power box is for my house as well. You imagine the electrician in and out here, in and out, in and out, turning the power on and off, on and off, because we had our entire electricity all the internal parts of the of the main box all replaced and changed. Uh, we've been getting a lot of work done. So yeah, that is where I, what's been going on with my channel for the last couple of days, you know, because I've been uploading pretty regularly and then just to stop like that all of a sudden, I thought I'd just give you guys an explanation. Yesterday's video was a filler, the one with the cherry shrimp uh, care and breeding tips for 2024. Uh, guys. Every time I come into my shrimp primary, I take lots and lots of bee footage. No matter what day it is, if I'm making a video or not, I come in and, I'm, and I take loads and loads of bee footage. <coughs> so, uh, today what I thought we'd do is, I have a couple of things to explain to you what I'm going to do uh, in my shrimp room today, because that's going to be one of those type of videos where I actually do stuff and you can watch and, you know, like the video and subscribe if you enjoy it kind of thing. And I'm also going to put up all this plethora of baby shrimp footage that I have because over the last couple of days yeah, I've gained quite a lot of them there's, there's probably like a hundred plus clips of just baby shrimps so you'll have that enjoy as well somewhere up here in the corner or something like that guys I'll try and come over to the one side so go up here will be shrimp baby baby shrimp footage and yeah you can watch that as well at the same time as we blether away uh, because I've had um, a few issues in here and one of them was the electricity as we spoke about before I really wasn't happy with the way um, I had my electricity done in here and it was basically little clips guys that you plug your wires into close the clips and then you can plug another wire to close the clips and that is your connection well I wasn't really keen on that inside the shrimp room so I've been changing some of my stuff I went back to just having I don't know if you guys can actually see this can you yeah over here I went back to having these on the side so there's one power cable and then I plug all my lights into this one bit and guys and, and why this is important is because it does away with the risk of uh, something shorting out in my shrimp room and guys it did actually happen it happened by coincidence because I was already changing all this stuff out when something did actually short and the short was caused because I was actually moving shrimp from a tank up here to another tank lower down and when I was doing it guys in between I was resting my net across the top of my lights, right? You think nothing of it. You think nothing of it at all, right? But these little spots of water, right, that was on the light, it was all dripping down, right, and going down to one end of the light. And get this light, guys, it wasn't waterproof. It's probably splash-proof, and that's it. But it was enough. Let me show you, because it's easier for me to show you than actually blather on like a raving idiot. So here's the light in question. This was one of the ones that fused... Let me see, you can probably make it in the camera that's darker here where it's actually burnt out on the inside. And if you can imagine guys that this light was above my tanks this way like this, I'm putting my shrimp net on top. Well, you can see it's got channels on the top here and the water was just running down like this. To this end here, that is not watertight. You could probably just make that out there no more, right? So water was going in this little gap here and it was getting inside the electronics and it fused this actual thing here tripped it, tripped the fuse box first and then because I didn't know what was tripping it, you did, well, the way you do it guys is you uh, switch your electricity back on and you go through and you unplug things and if it still keeps on tripping you know it wasn't those things well eventually I found out what it was, I just thought right that light's not on and I was looking at it and thinking yeah there's water got inside this 
bloody light right so this wasn't too cheap so it wasn't really any big deal but that spurned me on to actually change my lights that are used like this that are on top of tanks specifically these ones are still okay if they're way up high because if, if, if they're in areas where I can't actually spill the water onto them they're fine like up here I still have one but it's a way up above the tanks so there's no way water is going to get anywhere near it so what I had to do guys is like what you can see here these are all new lights and yeah the pretty decent ones they're actually waterproof as well they are um, not mega powerful they're like 11 and a half watts or something like that but guys this is what this video is going to be about today right is I have a couple of things to talk to you about like this and we'll have a look at things let's unbox another one because I went berserk with these guys because not only are they decent lights they are let me see six and a half thousand kelvin which is the ideal light range for me and my shrimp room that's what I love right so these ones are uh, waterproof as well I'm not sure if you submerge them if they'd be waterproof but they're a hell of a lot better than what I was using before right so let's get this open I'm showing you this guys as well because I want you to see how much of a difference it actually looks and yeah like this look okay, so on the end you can see here you can clearly see that this is a waterproof fit in here you see it on the end you can tighten this up and where the light actually goes in here there's a rubber flange and stuff on it so I'm pretty sure that these are really really waterproof at least to the point where you could probably drop this in a tank for a few seconds and pull it back out and it would be fine if you want to risk your life with doing stuff like that but I think because this is just two wires there's no earth on this as well that this entire unit is waterproof you see it so I thought that was a really good thing guys and, and the best thing about this is these lights were relatively cheap I got them on sale for $15 each, right? And I thought that was such a good deal because normally these are about $30 each, which is still, in my opinion, a good deal. I went out, guys, and I went berserk with them. I went out, I just literally went in the shop and saw 10 of them lying there. I was like, you're all coming home with me, right? And then I went online and I saw they had six in their online shop and I thought, right, order all of them as well. And then yesterday, I just happened to be in the shop because you know what it's like when you have a shrimp room? You have, uh, you need cable ties and stuff all the time. The life of a shrimp keeper is you need this kind of junk. Right, so I went in and I bought loads of packs of cable ties because yeah, cable ties are a godsend when you're doing wiring and stuff and you want to keep it all tidy. And yeah, I, I went in there and I bought even more lights. Right, so I have, I bought 10, then I bought another six. And yesterday, I, I think I bought another three in the store. So. Um, let me just show you this. I might actually put up some, some footage from the website or something like this, or maybe this is enough. For you guys that live in Scandinavia, if you want to go and buy yourself some of this light, you can probably see what this is. Six and a half thousand Kelvin. It's actually 13.5 watts. It's more, a little bit more powerful than I thought, right? So these lights on their own, guys, they're not very bright, right? They're not very bright, but if you have two next to each other, like you see here, they're just like my other lights. They're just as good. I can see perfectly fine on all the tanks, so yeah, we've been changing that. I've been changing some of my lights up there as well, and yeah, we've been uh, doing stuff in here. We've been just been carrying on doing stuff. One of the things I did do as well is we went and got an IKEA chair because, guys, having tall tanks away up there, you don't really want to stand on stools and wobbly chairs and whatever else. And these are quite good. These things. An Ikea chair, they, they are actually brown, but this one was painted white, as you can see the colour underneath. But these are pretty solid as well, so that was one of the new additions up on this side over here. Let me just turn the camera, guys, so you're not just bored looking at my beautiful face all the time. And we went a little bit gung-ho, we added some shelves, more lighting, because you can see I, I love my plants. This is one of the old lights, and this is where I'm talking about, guys, where I'm saying uh, we can have these older lights higher up because there's less risk of us getting electric shocks and stuff. This is something I'm working on right now. We're doing a little like uh, thing for our LED lamps to go and you can see the difference in the color temperature here. This is six and a half thousand Kelvin. And this one looks like it might be 5,000 Kelvin here. You can see the slight difference, a little bit orangey, but I don't mind it actually. I really don't mind it. So yeah, but you can see I've been going berserk with these lights. These ones, I still have to figure out a way to fit them I'm probably just going to do like one strip of wood 
two strip of woods, three strip of wood in here and then raise them all up. Like this at the top here, like this one strip of wood here because you get fittings for these are in here. They are, I can hear them. You get fittings for these lights that you can attach to wood and stuff and then these lights just clip on, they're really really good. So we've been doing that and then over here I've done kind of the same, I've put a new light up there and I've covered it so that the light glare is not all over the place. But you can see guys, this is the kind of light that you get from them. It's pretty good, I did uh, clear it this tank yesterday. And you see guys, I've just been kind of keeping myself busy because of the, all the work that I've been getting done in the house. Let me have a drink guys because that's a lot of talking to get through with it swallowing once. Uh. All right, the other thing was I got myself a new seat because the one I'm on just now is a little bit of a pain in the butt. It's one of those ones that is like this, look, it's comfortable, right, but it's, uh, guys, when you're going from tank to tank to tank, you really need something that is on wheels, right, you need something that is on wheels. So I went to the store yesterday, I, I've always wanted this seat for a long, long time, and yesterday was finally the first day yesterday was finally the first day that I'd actually thought yeah let's, let's buy this thing shall we unbox it guys and maybe try and build it because it's on wheels this is a mechanics chair as you can see here it costs about I don't know 60 bucks something like that uh, and yeah let's uh, it just makes it a whole lot easier you can see on the bottom as well it has like a tray you can put all your bits and pieces bits of airline whatever in there tedious mirror conductivity mirror anything and it's got wheelers so it's really important for me when I'm going from tank to tank to tank that I'm able to move quickly guys because when I'm looking from tank to tank to tank right, I'm going like this moving shrimp like this back and forward and I'm trying to film shrimp and stuff it's just a pain in the ass having to pick up the seat constantly so if you don't have a mechanics chair please consider buying one and just to let you guys know that this was uh, the last ones in the store here, and this was from Eula in Norway, Eula. So let's see, let's see if I can actually build this right now, if we can actually do it on camera. Hopefully it's not too heavy. <sighs> it's like Christmas. Right, so here is the chair. Oh, this is turning it to be a bit harder to pull it than I thought. It wants to all come out at once. Oh. It's kind of stuck. So we have the chair. We might need to get some screwdrivers and stuff. But you can see the seat. It's actually really big. It's actually really big. And this looks like it just fits on top of something. Let's put this down for a second. Onto my tiled floor. Let's smash it. Let's have a good smashing time. And this is the base. The base is actually very heavy. Which you would expect. And it looks like these trays are removable. <laughs> Yeah, they're definitely removable. Let's put these down on the floor for a second. Right, and there's a uh, instruction manual, which I'm not sure we'll need. I don't know, guys. Do you do you guys ever actually read an instruction manual? These uh, wheels look like they need to be put on with bolts, so keep them to the side. With bolts or with an Allen key. There's an Allen key for the little cherry bits. Right, so these normally just fit in. These normally just fit in like a really good fit. Nice and tight because it's your body weight that's pushing down. Right, So let's uh, put on our little feet first. Get these quickly done. And then we'll see where we go from there. There, that, that tray, I hope it's not broken already. The tray of doom. Yeah, as you can tell guys, I never <laughs> read the manual on anything. I just can't read it. Can't read it and refuse. And so I take it these little nuts here are for <laughs> the wheels. Let's unbox the wheels and bag the wheels. And so, so we have our little shrimp chair to sit on. Hammer on. Right, so it's a mechanic chair. mechanics chair so it's used for um, them doing work on cars and whatever else and they can put their tools and stuff around the base let's put this on here 
Right guys, I'm going to see if I can just pop these out beforehand, you know, so we're not actually dropping them constantly as we put in our stuff. Let's flip you upside down. Let me see, does this come out? Yeah, this base comes off of here as well, look. So this isn't a how-to, how to do this, but you're just here with me today to experience the joy of painting with Mark's shrimp tanks. Isn't that a lovely painting? Right, so I'm taking it that these go on like this. How hard is this going to be? Or does this go on first? They do, look. It's mental, isn't it? All that paperwork that they use and you don't actually need manuals in the first place. <laughs> I can see that these have ball bearings in them. We're going to use the little allen key to tighten them up. Like this. Reasonably tight. Like this. So the little bit goes in there first and then the thingamajig, the thingamabob. Alright guys, so I hope you don't mind me doing videos like this, because this, this is what I would be doing in the shrimp room anyway, and it's part of shrimp keeping, I suppose, technically it is, because you guys will be watching this thinking, will I get one of those chairs now? I know lots and lots of shrimp keepers that have these, right, so I've always wanted something that I could put my things in, and it'd just be, oh, pardon me, just be right under the, the seat, maybe like a shrimp net or something, or... As I said, like TDS meters or whatever else. Anything like if you have forceps or maybe a pair of scissors. Could be thread for tying stuff. Just anything like that. Now I can't see anything else that sh shows me how to put in that cylinder there. Because it's a cylinder that the seat is going to sit on. It all looks like it just fits into each other. Which is fine, as long as you're not picking it up. <laughs> It's one of those ones that just, it probably just uses your body weight to actually force it all together, which is fine. Last peel. Try and hold this up a wee bit so you guys can actually see something. Last peel, let's go. And there you have it. Right, so I'd imagine the tray goes on, back on it next. We have all our wheels on. But imagine this tray goes on next because the, the seat base is actually going to have to fit through it somehow, isn't it? Like a glove, guys. This is going to have to sit in here. But imagine, right? So this looks like all it is is the weight from your body being forced. It's because this, this uh, the hole that this fit in is tapered. It gets narrower as it gets to the bottom. So it's your own body weight, I think. It pushes this in because there's nothing on the bottom. There's nothing else here. I'll try to see if it, yeah, I can. There's nothing else here for us to actually put that into. And it's the same with this as well. There's nothing actually on this. So I wonder if it's uh, just like a compression fitting or something that this fits onto. Now this goes in here, and this probably clicks down or something. I might need to sit on it to see. Probably need to sit on it to see if this goes down right. So I'm going to just sit on it, guys. My other light fell down there. Let me aim you down the way so you can see me sitting on my little tiny chair. Hopefully you didn't hear that pump. I don't know if this is the right way or not. Let's put our trays on. You heard my light falling over. Well, rip that light. Ah, it will be fine. It doesn't want to lie, you see. Yeah, so I'm thinking this just relies on gravity completely to hold itself together, which is fine. Where's the other tree? The other tree is the one I dropped, wasn't it? All right, 
Right, so this gives you an idea of how this is going to work. Oh, that is very comfortable. Let's see how high it goes. If it will launch me across the room. This bit's not working. Oh, it's very t stiff, guys. Oh, that was a nice seat. Let's see. So it's just very stiff. Yeah, the first time it was just very stiff. But as you can see, right, so now I can go with my tanks like this. I can go with my shrimp net like this. No, right, so we're doing shrimp from here, and then I want to go over here, just quickly, up and down, up and down. So there you go, there's my little shrimp room chair. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? So yeah, these are about 60 bucks. And yeah, I will be using that for moving around from shrimp tank to shrimp tank. Hooey! That was a lot of uh, talk in there. But it is done and dusted. The only thing I don't like about it, guys, is is uh, it seems to be just compression that puts all this together. I think this might lock in place, this one, but this one is just a, is definitely just a compression thing. I probably would need like a mash hammer or something to get this back out, but you know what I mean? I don't want to like pick this up and then the whole thing falls apart. But there we go. Hello there, let me pick you up so I can show you around the shrimp room a little bit better than we have just been doing. Let me shut the door. Because we don't want the family to hear me talking because they think it's a weird device. My, no, my heart's not been like that the whole time like this. No. Right, so let's have a little look at the room. Uh, as I said, Ikea stool, uh, stairs or whatever you want to call these are actually a really good addition, especially if you have tanks further up like this. You can get yourself a set. They're like uh, two, th 20, maybe 30 bucks. I was going to say two or $300, but that would be an over-exaggeration. A little shrimp stool. It's a Hamron mechanics chair. You can see in the bottom, I just put some things in there so you can get a, a gist of what you're keeping there. Scissors, a wee knife, pipette, something like that. And guys, let's say uh, just basically go over the stuff that I've been doing because, yeah, as I, as I said, I've been adding my lights. I've been getting all my plugs off the floor above the tank so that you have this little bit of uh, line hanging in this so water can't go to the plug. I think that's quite sensible because, yeah, remember this tank broke its seam and it poured down everywhere. Well, if it broke down on this side, it would have went all over the plugs that were there. So. Yeah, I've been um, fixing my plugs, my wiring, removing, I think I removed probably about three or four actual extension cable plugs that were just joined together, they're like just a, an absolute mess. So we have timers in here, a little remote for my pump, this bit in here, and uh, I think the other one's just for my pump up there as well. So yeah, it is slowly getting there guys, slowly getting there. Um, unfortunately, the tanks have kind of taken a little bit of a back seat as, in far as, as far as like breeding shrimp and whatever else, but I always knew this was going to be an issue in the beginning where we're still finding our shrimp room legs, our new house, new shrimp room, and we're building it as we go. But this is a great experience for me as well because we're going to be doing another shrimp room through there as well. And I think the next time we do this, guys, I'm not going to use metal racks. I think I'm actually going to go with breeze blocks and wooden beams and plywood because it just looks so much nicer than this metal monstrosity, doesn't it? You know, you know, think. Anywho, this was just a plastic table, plastic shelves. I thought yeah, right, right well, they can actually be uh, built to just this high. Let's add two together. Now I have a black table in here that's good for me filming stuff and whatever else. And uh, yeah, guys, let's just quickly go over the tanks because yeah, not much has really changed. Start from the top. This one is uh, going to be ready for shrimp very, very soon. It's getting some lovely, nice green algae. The um, moss is growing nicely in here. You can see the green walls starting to appear. There's lots of little copiapods and whatever else. And here you can see those green walls starting here. This tank is just exploding, guys, with the baby shrimp. I've taken so many pictures of baby shrimp at this tank this, just this week. And uh, you know what's really interesting with this tank is these guys are definitely what you would call Michelings, right? These are shrimp that have come from breeding projects where 
they have been crossed with Taiwan bees. And I know this for sure, guys, because we're getting Taiwan bee young in here. So that's an added bonus. I got these shrimp from my friend Peter when he sadly closed down his shrimp room. So I wasn't expecting to get Taiwan bees from them, but there is, I can also see some zebra pintos and stuff, so I'm not sure how much other crossing has been done with them, but they're just throwing out tons and tons of babies. And it's, uh, it's just really nice to see. You can see what I'm doing with the lights here. The, this stuff up here is just temporary until I figure out a better way to do it. This is the five and a half Kelvin. Um, what would you call this warm light? Guys, this is okay. It's not like it's horrible. Like if you can't get these like daylight type bulbs, like this six and a half thousand Kelvin, getting something that's about five thousand, five and a half thousand Kelvin, it's perfectly all right as well. I mean, this looks, you can tell that there is a difference. You can see the tank, so it's just a little bit more orangey looking. If anything, guys, I actually quite like it. I do, I really, really do. I think it um, makes the tank look a little bit more natural. Oh, wee baby, wee baby shrimp. These guys had baby shrimp and then they've been buried and then they've had baby shrimp again. So now I'm just starting to see the benefit of it. If I remember guys, I'll put up some footage here where I saw some baby shrimp on here this morning, up here somewhere. You'll enjoy seeing that too. These guys are still being cycled. To be truthful guys, I could have put shrimp in them a long, long time ago, but yeah, I'm in no rush. I'm in no rush to do things and I know that I'll be getting more shrimp when the spring comes anyway and I, d I just don't want to fill my tanks with stuff that shouldn't really be there in the first place. I have big plans for this year. So we've got to keep space for them, the new shrimp that come up. Oh. You see, this is what I like about this chair, look. Move, bitch! No, go, oh, gee, I thought I was going to go too far. Anyway, let's go on to these, the rest of these tanks. Uh, this tank will, will be getting restarted because... Uh, these guys have been having babies, but the survival rate is non-existent. I'm just not seeing it. I checked the pH in this and it was still reasonably good. It's down about 6. And guys, the uh, remember the thing that we I talked to you about before. I was teaching you how to um, save tanks that you think are not saveable by doing the bigger water changes. This has had it twice, this tank, and I'm still not seeing the big difference in, in baby shrimp survival. So this one will be reset. Which is a shame because the adults seem to be doing quite well in here, so it's always one of those things, guys, where you think, yeah, I just need to give it a little bit more time, Mark, a little bit more time. And it, we should start to see more baby shrimp survival, but it's just not happening in this tank. And how long do you give it? If you keep on giving it long enough, guys, what ends up happening is your adults die off and you end up with an empty tank. So this tank is the polar opposite. They look very, very similar, don't they? Look at them. They were probably set up at the same time. This tank had the big water changes like we talked about, filled back up, and yeah, there's just hundreds of little crystal red shrimp in here all over the place. You guys might be able to see them, but they probably can't. I have loads and loads of footage of them as, as well in here. So these guys have had batch after batch of baby shrimp, and guys, I'm starting to go back to the way that I used to be shrimp, and that is... I'm trying to go back to a ratio of five females to one male to get my tanks going into baby boom mode because this is what I used to do guys. Remember when I used to start uh, YouTube videos in the beginning I had a big like crystal red shrimp tank and there was like thousands of crystal red shrimp and then I just, I basically got lazy and I wasn't doing the culling, taking out most of the males and whatever else. This is how you do it, this is how you get your uh, tank to be absolutely full of baby shrimp is you keep all the females, keep all the females and on all the nasty looking males especially you put them into your cold tank. The only way I would actually remove a female is if she was like really, really ugly, like it's almost see-through or something like that. This tank is probably another one that will get redone because yeah, the, the baby shrimp in here, but there's just, I don't know what it is. You can, guys, you can always tell. There's a little baby blue bolt over there. You can see the end of my finger. But that's one baby I can see in here. I know for sure that there's more baby shrimp, but one baby isn't enough reason to keep this tank going any longer. I think it's been about eight months, this tank, and it's just not produced at all, unfortunately. And this one also had the big water change, 90% water change twice, I think. So I'm just not seeing any big, huge difference. Uh, these guys had babies again. They had babies. Survival rate was reasonably low. Pardon me, I just had to burp. But then they had babies very recently again, like teeter top tiny babies, and you can see they're quite active, so I'm quite happy with this tank. This tank, these are, guys are doing okay. There's just a few 
Guys, what it is in this tank is I've, I've actually been removing my, um, what would you call them? This one here, for example, right? these are super crystal reds, right? Super crystal reds. So the ones with just the little eye patch are called Santa, Santa grade crystal. Yeah, they are. And so what I've been doing is I've been taking out the ones that are just all red shrimp and I've been putting them in here. So this will hopefully start up as a colony of all red shrimp, but I think they're all at the back over here, you probably see them. And this tank is completely different, the shrimp are all over the filter, all over the glass. Looking good. This tank is empty still, I'm going to get a tank for here very soon. And you can see what I mean by these, these uh, lights guys, how, how bright that is. It's just okay isn't it? So for this really I need to add at least another light or two. That will take it up to like 30 plus watts or something. This tank is my uh, culled tank for my bee shrimp, basically. So all the males, whatever else, will all go in here. And yeah, these guys are doing okay in here. It's just a culled tank. You can see the shrimp at the back there. And uh, most of these are males. We're going to have a sausage party. Hope that didn't sound too wrong. We've been doing the lights up here as well. So like this, we've covered the lights. So it makes it a wee bit easier for you guys to see as well. Uh, release babies, bazillions of them. This is our cherry shrimp tank. Guys, I can't believe how full, how much this moss has grown. It's uh, getting just a little bit too much for this tank, I think. And it's only, if, if I look back, I think it's only been probably one month. They've had lots of babies in here as well. Let's see, how are you guys doing over here? See the bamboo shrimp there? So there, these are the main occupants of this tank. We have some tangerine tigers and we have some little baby bristlenose plecos. You'll probably see one at the back there. Let's, guys, let's feed these if I remember, because you really should feed these more or less uh, daily. Bamboo shrimp or they tend to starve. So yeah, I've been feeding them my powder flakes. And yeah, not so much guys, if you're feeding daily, you don't want to like power food into the tank, but remember there's like five adults in here, so this is enough for them. And you'll see what I mean when I put it in, how it spreads all over the place really, really easily like this. And uh, any powder that goes into that water flow there, it'll get pushed right down onto the shrimp, you see them? Oh, they're grabbing all the duckweed. They are grabbing all the duckweed, let me put this lid back on because yeah, I'm, I'm very bad for not doing stuff like this and wasting expensive shrimp food. And so I gave it this tank a good clean out the other day. And I'm a little bit stumped guys as to where my bristlenose pleco females have went because I had at least two in here and they just completely disappeared. Completely. And I did think to check the stand pipe here because that pipe is big enough for them to go in and, th and there was nothing, <coughs> nothing in that tank at all. But it's a bit of philandra, big bits of wood, pleco caves, Loads and loads of shrimp. As I said over here, these two are probably going to be dismantled pretty soon. I actually put one of these lights on this tank. This is a good example to show you how bright it is. And it's bright enough, I think. I've been trying to clear out the middle of this as well so that the crayfish can be seen. These guys are doing good. Put a piece of floating food in there so you guys could see them. Lots and lots of endler babies. There's baby pleco in here as well. And there's also shrimp. I don't know if you've ever seen a shrimp because the, the shrimp tend, don't tend to go for this floating stuff. I thought I'm a little bit burpy. A little burpy mark. So yeah, this tank here is doing fantastically well. Little baby. So guys, these are my Galaxy Cross... German spotted pinto crosses that I did a long time ago and yeah they look nothing like uh, German spotted pinto galaxy fishbone crosses at, at all now. They don't look like that do they? But they've had tons of babies. Babies. So they've had at least two or three batches in here since we've moved house. I think yesterday I, I counted a lot of these little teeter tot like micro babies here. So these are newborn. But there's also bigger ones uh, floating around that are probably a few weeks old. So yeah, this tank is doing nice. I counted a lot of little teeter tots here, another teeter tot baby there. 
And uh, yeah, there's a good example of a German spotted pinto because that's a German spotted pinto young. So you often can find the lineage of your shrimp in their young because yeah, most shrimp don't breed true. So you'll always get ones that go back to their origins. So yeah, for us with this, you're talking uh, galaxy fish bones. And what you'll get from them is, is uh, blue bolts specifically. You get a lot of blue bolts. So this, this is what you tend to get in a tank like this. Just lots and lots of blue bolt babies. And they're also little gorgeous things. I've actually added another light to this to see if we can get our green walls back or if it's something else that we need to add. Like if it's a nutrient thing or... I'm not sure because, yeah, I noticed uh, once our little animals like uh, limpet, uh, snails and whatever else, once they start to explode, yeah, our green wall just basically disappeared overnight. You see it's gone. So, yeah, I added more light to see if we can actually make our green walls happen again. And guys, I've been doing some research with uh, Chio algae. I have Chio macro algae over here. And it's actually a very, very good way to get nutrients through the water is to get algae to remove it. Because if you can grow lots of algae, what happens is you're removing nitrates and stuff out of the water column as well. So I think it's a good thing for a shrimp tank if you try and get as much light as you can onto the tank without it going overboard into horrible, messy algae and whatever else. And yeah, that's that. Our OP tank is doing really, really good. Guys, I was wondering the other day, right, these guys were, uh, I put food in here, none of them came to it, right, and, and when I was looking at the tank, I'm not sure if this will come out on camera or not, but this looks like sand, doesn't it? See on the green stuff here? It looks like sand all over the place. You see it on the, on the base here, it looks like sand. It's not, it's actually Opa Ula Poop. Right, so they have been feeling like the clappers on all of this moss that's been grown on these moss algae that's been grown on these rocks, you see it? So I put food in here the other day and they just didn't go for it at all. I see a neric snail there. Let's go to the last tank. Another neric snail. Where? Let me see. Yeah, so I tend to put in floating food in here because I like to get this reaction from, from, from them for the camera, like this. And basically guys, what this does is they all hoard the food Hoard, did I say the wrong word there? <laughs> hoard the food. And they make it sink to the bottom like this and just, they just form a ball, you see it? So I think in probably in the next few days or something we're going to actually, we'll take our big green net, we'll add some food to them, we'll catch a lot of these opa ule and we'll transfer them up to the top because guys, what I've been doing recently is, is I've been taking some water out of here into a bucket and then siphoning water from this tank into this tank Right, and then the water that's came out of this tank is going back into the tank here. Right? So this water is virtually the same water as here now. And I did this, guys, so we have uh, we have no issues with acclimating our opa ule because it's the same water. When I test the salani and this, is exactly the same now, so that is what we will do. Right, where's my weed chair? Let me see, you fully extended. Oh, you are. You are, you wee bugger. All right, guys, before we go, right, I have uh, something else. Let me know in the comment section below if you listen to a lot of music in your shrimp room, because I do, and recently I got this. This is one of those little uh, Bluetooth speakers, and this one is actually really, really good. It's a little GBL thing, uh, and this cost me probably about $70 for this thing, and I absolutely love it. I come in here and I just go through a playlist of music, and unfortunately I can't show you guys how it works um, on this video because I've got copyright strike, but yeah, get, if you don't have one of these and you have a shrimp room, get some kind of music in there because it just it makes you want to be in your shrimp room even more when you're listening to your favourite music. Oh God, I don't have talk some bash. My God. Right guys, as well, uh, let's talk about uh, t-shirts. We have t-shirts and hoodies. We have these in our store. If you click, click the link somewhere on my a channel. Some of my videos have these uh, pictures with shirts and hoodies and stuff there as well. If you want to buy one, that will help out a ton. But guys, as well, one thing that helps me out even more is if you become a channel member, right? So what I've been doing lately is I've been adding the channel members back onto the screen here as a thank you for helping me to actually do my shrimp room because that's what it is. Every new member that I get means that I can actually afford to do that with a little bit extra in here so all this stuff all goes back into my shrimp room i'm not safe it all into some swiss account somewhere it all goes back into my shrimp room guys and it pays for future builds like uh, my sh new 
trim park and stuff that will be getting built through there. Everything helps, guys. So if you love my channel, if you love me, <laughs> then please do consider becoming a member. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'm probably going to get back to doing daily uploads very, very soon because I know a lot of you actually enjoy these longer uh, type videos where I'm actually doing stuff in the shrimp room. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Happy shrimp keeping. Love you all. Bye.